Hi guys, Drew with Northridge Community Church. I was wanting to put together a video about the new RTA on the X32. So I just installed the new version of the firmware, which is 2.02. And so once you install that, you get this cool little RTA. Um, so to find this, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and, I'll show you this a little bit more zoomed in here, uh, where you can find it a couple different ways. Um, but one of the cool ways is going to your meters and and normally when we click our meters, we have our channel, mix bus, aux, um, in and out, all the different meters. And so we can page over to RTA. Now, in the RTA, there's two, two different types. There's a spectrograph, which we abbreviate as spec, and then the bar graph. Um, so what the RTA does is called a real-time analyzer. It puts the audio frequencies from 20 all the way to up to 20 kilohertz and puts it into a, uh, a visual sense. So this takes the amplitude of the audio and puts it into a graph form. So the bar, you can see that there's uh, different decibel levels on the, on the side. So negative 30, negative 24, negative 18, negative 12, negative 6. And then we can see all of our normal standard frequency uh, deviations deviations there on the bottom. Now what the spectrograph does is it does the same thing, but then it puts the amplitude into a color and um, then also puts it into a history. So we can see, for instance, if I whistle, that's what feedback would look like. And so the nice thing about doing the spectrograph is if there is a piece of feedback, like at 2K, then we can look up into our RTA and we can see that, hey, there was a piece of feedback at 2K. Let's go turn that down on that channel that's feeding back. And so the spectrograph is a really, really powerful thing that you might miss on the bar graph. So I would suggest leaving it on the spectrograph unless you're doing some system tuning um, and then you can do it on the bar graph if you'd like, uh, since it's a little bit easier to see um, amplitude on that. Now, another cool feature is then when we go into and select the EQ on a channel, and we'll go over to, um, to my voice here. So we're gonna select me, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the view on the equalizer, and now we can see up in the LCD that there's a bar graph there. And we have this little RTA pre, um, or bar spectrograph. So we have a couple different options for the RTA on the channel as well. So we can either do a bar graph or we can also do the spectrograph and that will scan across here. So let's go ahead and take my um, the high frequency of my voice and we can turn it down and we'll see that um, we can see that it's gone here and we can really see it on the bar graph. So we can, uh, I've turned the high frequency down all the way and we can see that it's very not there. And we can turn it all the way up, make me sound really annoying. And we can see that when I'm talking, especially with the S's, we can see that it's really high. So um, let me turn that back. There we go. Now we have a normal voice again. Um, so when we are um, EQing an instrument, this is a really powerful tool. Um, so I've taken my kick drum um, and on. Uh, I'm playing out of my um, computer in Reaper. And I've taken my kick drum, which is here and I have put in a boost of about nine decibels um, around the 300 uh, hertz range, which is the range that we really don't want to have a, a kick drum sounding nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the EQ here on my kick drum. Reset all. Uh, all bands, yes, we are going to reset that. And so let's go ahead and play um, just the kick drum. So I'm going to go ahead and turn down all the rest of the channels. except my voice, of course. So I have turned down all the channels except the uh, Beta 52, um, which is on the outside of the kick drum. Um, we also have a Beta 91 on the inside, if you were wondering. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I, the, the boxy sound that we're hearing, um, we can go to our EQ section. And let me zoom in on my, on my hands here. Uh, we can go to the EQ section, select one of the uh, four different frequencies here. And we can go do a hunt, um, a, a search and pounce is uh, one, one technique that I like to teach new sound people. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to boost and create a, a wide Q. And we're going to move this up and down until we find that problem frequency that we're wanting to turn down. So once you start hearing that boxiness sound, which is going to be in that two to 300 range, 
we can then start narrowing our cue. Okay, that's that really boxy sound that I'm wanting to get rid of. And so what I'm gonna do is now I am going to turn the gain down. And we can also see that the RTA down here has changed accordingly to my um, to what I'm applying to the channel. Now we can also do a RTA pre, which is pre-EQ. So if we click that, we can see that there's that boost there at the two to 300. But anyway, so that is a quick, uh, quick and simple way of showing you guys uh, the RTA and how it can uh, help us with um, viewing what the channels are um, are doing. Like if we go and select my voice again, we can see everything that my voice is doing. Like the uh, low cut, we can turn this down. When the AC units are going, uh, there's a lot of low frequency noise down here. Or if I'm breathing, like. <sighs> you know, that sort of thing, we can notice that there's some noise down here. And so to cut that out, we can bring in our low cut and bring it in so that I'm still getting enough of the low end of my voice through into the recording, but I don't have any of that, like the pop. Um, like if I had the low cut out and I went pop, you know, we would see that huge pop down here in the 50 hertz range. So that's why when we bring our low cut in, if I go pop, it doesn't, it doesn't affect uh, our signal as much. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post below. The, but that's a quick uh, tutorial on viewing the RTA and the spectrograph of the X32 from the new firmware. Thank you, guys.